Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this Pentecost Sunday. The Spirit of God has been poured into our hearts, and we are supposed to live from the power of God's Spirit working in us and through us. For the times perhaps we notice we have failed to do that, or perhaps even are not even aware of God's Spirit at work in our lives. Let's now ask the Lord for mercy, forgiveness, but most of all, to be able to recognize God's Spirit at work. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, Fill now once more the hearts of believers. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, They were all together in one place. And suddenly, a sound came from heaven, like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout people from every nation under heaven. And at the sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send send forth forth your Spirit and and renew renew the face of the earth. earth. You take away their breath, they die. Returning to the dust from which they came, you send forth your Spirit and they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord, send send forth forth your Spirit and and renew renew the face of the the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Lord, Lord, send send forth forth your Spirit spirit and and renew renew the face of the earth. earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain, the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pentecost is a key celebration for the church after the resurrection of Jesus, but one which I think often causes a lot of anxiety, well, at least for me. I'm never quite sure what to say about Pentecost. It is strange in many ways, wind and doves and tongues of fire. And often when we talk about Pentecost, we perhaps always seem to move towards looking at the physical manifestations of the Spirit. We reduce the Spirit to external signs. The first Pentecost, it seems to me, suggests that the Spirit, first of all, works 
in unpredictable ways. The Holy Spirit is sent to live in us and amongst us and continues to reveal God's presence to us in new ways, God's truth to us in new ways. You see, God's presence and God's truth is not something which is static, but rather something which is dynamic. If we look at those disciples after this Feast of Pentecost, notice how there is a dynamism as they go about bringing the good news to the ends of the earth. And I think it's important for us today to see this dynamic spirit at work in our own lives and in the world. I want to suggest perhaps that there are three things that we should do that help us to participate in the dynamism of the Spirit of God that is at work. And the first one is simple yet very difficult for us. We are told in that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles how all these people are speaking different languages and yet they understand one another. And it seems to me God's Spirit today is inviting us to develop a new language. A language that everyone can understand. There is a common language in that first community in the Acts of the Apostles, a language which forms and shapes that community. We must be careful that we don't only think of this as physical speech, because the new language that should shape us is the language of peace rather than war. The language of reconciliation rather than conflict. The language of cooperation rather than competition. The language of hope rather than the language of despair. Of joy rather than sadness. Of tolerance and openness rather than bigotry. Of friendship and hospitality rather than division. And it seems to me that when we are able to do that, when we allow ourselves to be shaped by this language of the Spirit, then we are allowing God's dynamic Spirit to continue to work in us and through us. It's a language that we are invited to speak every day, the language of God's Spirit. The second thing is, there is a hint of these divine gifts that are given at Pentecost, because the Spirit gifts us. And so I want to suggest to you today as well that Pentecost is a celebration, first of all, of our own giftedness. We hear that as Paul talks to those early Christian communities about gifts. And sometimes we struggle to accept the gifts that God has given us. Sometimes even, we don't even know that these gifts are there. And yet, God gifts every single human being. And so Pentecost is almost like that annual reminder for us that there are gifts in each and every person. And these gifts are, be are to be used for the service of others. And in a strange way, when we begin to use our own giftedness in the service of others, we somehow begin to recognize them more. We somehow are able to claim those gifts that God has given us. And so today, it seems to me on this Feast of Pentecost, as we celebrate this gifting spirit, we are asked to begin by looking at the giftedness within us and say to ourselves, how can I use those gifts that God has given me for the service of others? 
And the third and final thing I want you to notice is how the Spirit distinguishes us from others. Not because we are better or somehow because we are believers and therefore think that we have a a hold on things that others don't have. But the Spirit should help us to be distinguished from others by the very quality of the lives that we choose to live. The hope, for example, that we choose to bring to others. You know, it's so easy to be one of the crowd. It's so easy to fall into the negative rhetoric that we hear not only here in our own society, but around the world about so many different things. The Spirit of God is asking us to live distinguished lives by the very way we choose to approach things, the way we do things, and the way that we say things. And this distinguishes us perhaps from simply the run of the mill or what everybody else is doing. The Spirit leads us to a deeper understanding of this new language of love. The Spirit helps us to recognize the gifts that we have been given. And because of that, we should be different. We should be distinguished by our genuine concern and care and service of others. And so as we celebrate this day of Pentecost, let's pray that we would experience in our own lives that unpredictable way that God's Spirit is at work. Let's pray that we would experience the dynamism of that Spirit that is always pushing us forward and asking us to open our arms, to open our hearts, and to grow. The poet Pablo Neruda says, I want to do with you what spring does with the trees. I want to do with with you what spring does with the trees. Let's pray today that this day of Pentecost will do to us what spring does to the trees so that we may reveal through our own lives the beauty of the God who has created us all. Let's now make a profession of faith by praying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of God has been poured into our hearts. Let us now, through that Spirit, bring our prayers before the Lord. For the Church, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we may faithfully bring the good news of Jesus' love and salvation into the world through our words and actions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, disciples of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit would fill our hearts with courage and make us joyful messengers of God's word and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For world leaders, that the Holy Spirit may strengthen them in their work for real justice and peace in our world today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the Holy Spirit may give courage to the fearful comfort the sorrowful, and give hope to the hopeless. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For us gathered to worship, that the Holy Spirit would help us to walk in the freedom of the children of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, Almighty God and Father, we give you thanks that you send your Spirit to live in us and amongst us. We pray now that you hear these, our prayers, and that prompted by your Spirit, you direct us and lead us and guide us through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God's bread. Let's draw this all to line and begin to share. We don't need for us to humble himself to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We ask you to receive us and please sacrifice you up with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us from all our sin. Let's pray that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. <coughs> comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory 
of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as you look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer those around us, wherever you may be, a sign of God's peace. If you're alone, simply just pray for peace at this time. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament, 
and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.